Okay, we're hey, here. We're here. Life, life and balance again. Um, got Dr. John Thomas here. We're going to be talking about things that have to do with life and balance. Today's program is going to be all about trigger foods, which yes. is a big problem for a lot of people, especially if you're trying the diet or anything like that. I mean, you know, people can sabotage your diet very easily with, Just like with that. bringing in the wrong thing, especially your mom. Your mom will bring in the really cool food. So you got to eat this, manja, manja type of thing. Yeah. Business meetings the same <laughs> way. People bring things to business meetings, and it's like, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah, here's a donut. Here, yeah. have three of them. <laughs> You're not going to eat my sacrificial donut? Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> um, it's, it's the month of October. I want to remind everybody that it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and Again, it's also National Chiropractic Month. Yes. So those are a couple of big deals that people need to pay attention to. Right. And because of those great events, we're also giving away a free Titron, Titron scan. Yes. So if you want to find out you know, what's on a whack or anything like that, this is your chance to get a free scan yeah. that will actually pinpoint all kinds of different issues. I mean, it's really been a wonderful thing for me. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you go ahead and check, it's totally uninvasive. It doesn't hurt. That's like, right. If you're real ticklish, maybe it might be a little ticklish. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but it's, uh, it's a very gentle process right. to really get an opportunity to take a look inside as what's happening right. and specifically identify where your key issues are so that you'll understand how the treatment protocol is being put together and why. And again, it's not about pain. It, it can be for pain, but it yes. can also be for things like why are you getting sick all the time? Yeah. Why is your sinusitis never going away? Yeah, so I mean, why am I having so many digestive right. issues, you know? Reproduction a, issues, all those types of it's things. A really, it's a really cool program, and it's been around for a while, so it's a tried and true method, oh, and it's very, very yeah. accurate, and it's a great benchmark to set. So you say, here's where I am now, and in six months you do it again, and you say, wow, look how much I've improved. Right. So yeah, that's really exactly. sort of a cool thing. So we're talking about uh, trigger foods. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to say, give them the phone number. Call yeah, me. call 904-683-8177. Schedule that free Titron. Come in and find out a lot more about you and how your body is functioning. Yeah, and you can always go to the website, uh, byronlifehealthcenter.com. Yes. And you, could get a, you can actually make an appointment on there, actually. You can. You can actually get in there. You can get our newsletters. There's all. Yeah. You can get attached to our blogs. We have tons of information for you to get connected to how we can help transform your health. So let's talk about trigger foods. Now, what is a trigger food? You know, a lot of people misunderstand the meaning of a trigger food. People think a trigger food is, oh, it's going to make me fat. You know, those types of things. Trigger foods are actually foods that go in your body and make a specific thing happen. You know, that's the key thing. It could be a neurotoxin. It could be something that has your DNA structure uh, respond. And so a lot of things we were talking just before we started on the show is, you know, a lot of the foods that we have out there, they have specific ingredients that are acting as trigger foods to get you to behave. Right. Uh, to, over, to overeat. Right, to behave in a way that they want so that you can get more products sold. So you get right? that huge bag of Doritos that you can't yes. put down, and when you look up, you know, your face is orange. That's right. <laughs> you know, what was it, Lay's? You can't eat just one? Right. Of course you can't. And, because they got all the way. salt and stuff on there. <laughs> and a lot of the foods, a lot of the modern foods actually have modified salts and fats and stuff like that that they've create a design yes. to make you sort of addicted to the food where you can't put it down. I mean, those little orange, you know, fish. The goldfish. goldfish. Yes, the goldfish. <laughs> or Cheez-Its or whatever. <laughs> I'm just thinking of my own self here. I'm yes. giving my, my way myself. We know all of his weaknesses so now. You don't see those in my house because I'll eat the whole box. Um, well, you know, it's the same reason they put pretzels on at the bar. Right. Right? Because they're going to get you salty and then you want to buy and more And when you shut down that salt, you got to have three more beers. That's right. <laughs> I want a side of pretzels and two beers, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's lots and lots of trigger foods out there. So let's talk mm -hmm. about some of the ones that, you know, the big ones that people have. You know, there's a lot of them out there. And, and trigger foods can be anything from what they're putting in pizzas. So like we were talking about potato chips, a lot of sodas. Peanuts. Yeah, peanuts. Yeah. Things that um, have salt. Things, French yes. fries. The French fries from any of the fast food places are really something that a lot of people can oh, yeah. <laughs> do because they have lots and lots of salt. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, you suck that down, then you're going to yeah. suck down the Coke or the whatever it is they have that has the other aspartame and all the other kind of stuff well, in it. I know a lot of a lot of individuals <laughs> that I've seen today, they actually go and they don't have the burger, they just order the fries, Yeah. you know, because they want the fries. And it's you because know? the fries are the probably the most addicting part. Now, oh, the yeah. hamburgers also got extra stuff in them and stuff like that. You know, in the article that you wrote, you talk about uh, you can sort of compare it to a recovering alcoholic. I mean, yes. they can't have that one drink because if no. they have that one drink, they're going to have 10 drinks. Well, right. 
There's lots of foods like that. Like we talk is. about the Oreo cookie. The Oreo cookie. Yeah. yeah. And here's the funny thing about Oreos, because I've investigated this, because I used to be a really big Oreo addict. He was trying to define <laughs> and justify his use. <laughs> is that the Oreo cookies you eat today are not the same Oreo cookies that your granddaddy ate. Mm -mm. Okay, they've not changed no. them a lot. Yes, they now, have. Now you can get something similar to the Oreo cookies, you know, like if you get Numino's or yeah. something like that, okay, because they're yeah. much more natural. But the new ones today got all kinds of chemicals. Oh, yeah. Just read the, the list of ingredients. I can't even pronounce some of the oh, yeah. things that are in there. So, it's, And that's the, that's the crux, I think, of the issue. It's not that people get addicted so much to the food because they're food addicts. Yes. It's because the food is addicting. The food is it's engineered <laughs> to be addictive to you right. in a lot of ways. The ingredients, the recipes that they put together has been a recipe that gives you, you know, the satisfaction of eating a food that you enjoy, but also yeah. driving you to actually want more and more and more. And here's the thing. It's not just fast food. It's not just Burger King and McDonald's. I don't know if I can sit there. But anyway, it's not just fast food. <laughs> it's also other restaurants. Yes. Because when you go in these other restaurants, a lot of times they'll use, you know, the different spices and stuff. And a lot of these spices have these addicting things in them. Yes. Well, they're cute. They MSG is a really good example. Oh, okay? MSG is a great example yeah. of that. Yeah. And, and again, I know when I, if, if it's got MSG in it, I get the sniffles like right away. Just now, like I, the, what sucks is though, I like the MSG. That's what's, that's what's yeah. crazy about it. And what, I don't know if you've ever gotten into the research of MSG, but it's actually a DNA, DNA modifier. Yeah. It starts to modify how your DNA, and that is the root chain of how your body is put together. And it modifies it. So. You know, the food companies have been doing this for a pretty long time, probably since about the late 60s, early 70s. They started modifying foods. They got, mm -hmm. they got real smart with their chemistry and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And they altered lots of foods. So, for example, Coca-Cola's formulas changed like three or four or five times. Sure. They were all getting big into using um, non-sugar sugars, if you will. Yeah, you know, artificial sweeteners. Cor corn, yeah. corn syrup and all that other corn kind of syrup stuff. And maltodextrin, erythritol, you, you have so many different ones out there that you can use. And of course, you have the Splendas and the And, and, and the fake, the fake of sugars, not mm -hmm. just the, the artificial sugars, but the fake yeah. sugars. And all those things have, a, have an addicting type of thing. Mm -hmm. Part of it is psychological. For example, a lot of people will drink sodas because they think they're going to lose weight, you know, the diet sodas. But the reality is there isn't any research whatsoever that shows yeah, no. that it helps you lose no. any weight whatsoever. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. Uh, so. As a matter of fact, there's lots of research that shows that if you drink lots of diet sodas, you probably gain weight. You don't, you, yeah. It, because um, your brain's not getting the sugar, so you want to eat more. Yeah, among that, you'll also probably have some other related health issues right. from that as well that we're seeing in the research. So it's not, not a positive move to do that. Yeah. So what can hardcore Oreo addicts do <laughs> to not go after the Oreos? Now, guess what? We've been having a, a bag of Oreos in my house for like three years. Okay. So... So, so <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> He's doing pretty good. What can you do? You know, there's a lot of steps that you can take to really address those issues, but really to understand how your body is functioning and understand what is going to be a trigger to you and what isn't. You've got to find out what you can indulge in. You know, you have a great thing. Obviously, you've tried Numinos, yeah. and so you've tried to find another alternative to what you're doing, and that's really what it is. And I know, you know, you've got to look and see, know what's in the ingredients, right. know what you're eating when you're eating it. You know, if you can't, if you're looking at a list of things and you can't pronounce 75% of what's right. in it, it's a good signal that you probably <laughs> should put the bag down. And here's here's a, a, a simple thing that when you go in the grocery store, the ones that have the big long ingredient lists are usually inside the center aisles. Yes. The ones that are on the outside usually have lists that you can probably understand what... <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, without a doubt. And yeah. if you get the end caps that are on sale, right. that's probably the bigger list of, right. of ingredients. Again, sure. I mean, it's, it's... Luckily, they passed a couple of laws a few years ago that, that they had to say what was in the thing. Right, <laughs> right. And, and they, they don't have to say everything because it could have, like, rat particles or something in it. And they only... <laughs> It's one in ten thousandths of a piece of rat that's well, in yeah. there that you... <laughs> well, there's some really interesting things out there because there's some, like, for example, if you're going to use a broth for something, right. you'll be very surprised if you look at the ingredients on a broth, it has sugar in it. Right. What is sugar doing in a broth? Right. If you get a chicken broth, why has it got sugar in it? Right. And they don't list it in the ingredients because they put it in natural, in It'll natural say flavoring. It'll say other natural flavoring yes. is the other one that you always yeah. see, and I'm like... <laughs> What is the other natural flavor? Right. Again, that's a rat paw or something. They got and the sugar in. and stuff like that. So when you look at that, that's really what you're, you've got to be very aware yeah. of what you're putting in your body. Right. And that's why I tell people, I mean, the best way to, it's maybe a little bit more of a pain to cook your own food and stuff like that. My, mm -hmm. my partner, Carl, loves to cook. So 
One of the reasons he's real healthy, I think, is because he cooks for himself. He knows what's yes. in the food. You know, yes. I'm not going out and buying all kinds of pre-made stuff and eating the pre-made yeah. stuff and, and I'm wondering why you can't shed the weight and so on. Exactly. Uh, and on top of that, a lot of these additional things that they put in the foods, although this show is not about weight loss, right? it's, it's these additional things in the food that trigger foods often make it hard for you to lose the weight. Well, that's a great from, statement. From, from two, from, it's a double whammy. It One is. is you overeat. Yes. The other is... The toxins, if you want to call them that, in the foods yeah. make you hard to get rid of the stuff. Yeah, and that's really interesting. It's kind of a compounding issue because the, the, we call them trigger foods. They have, a, 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 for example, a neurotoxin effect where the body starts to shut down its ability to burn fat. Right. And you know, so it goes into storage. It's got an addictive quantity to it, a quality, so that you start eating more and more and more of it. So you're eating more. You can't burn it. You're going to store more of it. Right. And so you have a double negative there, and it's really compounding the problem. And your body just can't really take care of it. Take Those care are called disruptive. Yeah. Food disruptive. the body. And again, I would say that the trigger food issue is something that's sort of tied into weight loss in, in general. Even yes. though this is not a show about weight mm -hmm. loss, if, if you can figure out what your trigger foods are, yes, that can really help you move away from them. Although I would tell you that if if you really love Oreos, it's sort of hard to get away from well, them. And that's well, that's okay. But if you find good Oreos that don't yeah, have the crap, then at least <laughs> you had a great point. Yeah. Make your own. Yeah. Go and find some great ingredients. There's some great recipe, you know, great you know recipes you can get out there, and you can substitute the ingredients for the good stuff. And you can have a good, healthy Oreo that's not going to have right. this type of. And an I'll effect. give you an example. Say you really love ice cream. Well, if you look at ice creams out there, there's a wide variety of ice creams and what's in them. Yes. And what we did in my house, we substitute a yogurt type ice cream mm -hmm. and it has a lot less calories, but the yogurt itself is much better for you. And yeah. when you read the ingredients list, you can understand what the heck's in it. What's in it? And then if I want strawberry or whatever, we actually cut up the strawberries and put it in there. I can make my own sorbets at the house right. and I do that regularly so I can make fresh, fresh ice cream, if you will, cream. want to call that. And, yes. and those are the kinds of things you can do. So I know we got about mm -hmm. a couple of minutes left before we uh, take a, a sponsor break. We're going to be talking about the tip of the week, you yes. know, for food. For what? What do you? How do you know when you're being you're using a trigger food? What What's triggering right. you? What? That's how do you true. know that is? So we're going to yep. come back in about sixty seconds. So be ready for that. And uh, if you got any questions, maybe give us a call. Absolutely. <laughs> Hi, it's Dr. John Thomas again from Vibrant Life Health Center. We're talking about a tool that's going to benefit you today. A lot of people come into the office with chronic neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, sciatic pain, and they're wondering what is the real problem. This tool that we call the Titron can identify where those problems really are in your body without any inaccuracy. So it gives us a really good opportunity to identify specifically what we need to do chiropractically to take care of your issues so we can lead to resolution. Whether that be a headache issue, whether it be a chronic shoulder problem, a neck problem, and through this process of using the Titron, we can identify specifically how our care is gonna be focused on those issues to address what you have specifically. The cool thing about this is that you don't have to question where your issues are. And we can do this because we have a special running right now where you can come in and have a, a Titron scan at no charge here at Vibrant Life Health Center. Okay, we're back. So, we are. you know, we're gonna, we're gonna do the tip of the day which is about eating and how do you figure out What's the food that What is the trigger you? food to you? You know, what, there, there's a specific strategy to really do this. For people who are on a program, you know, there's a lot of people out there that want to just find these things out. Journaling. We've talked about journaling. Every program utilizes some form of journaling when you're talking about a weight loss program. And that is because it's a very strong technique to use. And if you start journaling all the things you eat, and along with that, measure, weigh yourself, right. and relate the journal to what you're eating every day, you can start to really identify the trends mm -hmm. and what are the things that are affecting your body positively and what are negative. Yeah. When, I, when I did my journaling, I would actually journal about, and I, this is not recent, but I mean in the past, I would journal about how, not only what foods I ate, how but much? how much I ate. Yes. So I would journal, you know, the, the content size and the calorie count. Mm -hmm. And I quickly learned that certain foods were like a no-no. Yeah, like half a bag of Oreos. Yeah, that, that'll example. do it real quick. <laughs> or or the chili cheese fries or yeah. whatever it is. That exactly. You, you know, everybody has, and most people have more than one. I mean, 
you know, donuts. And here's a, sort of a neat thing. I went through the Nuestra Most program, I guess, about four or five months ago now. Mm -hmm. And after I've gone through it, I've actually found that my addiction level to certain kinds of foods has gone down. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't feel hungry for them. So I could grab that one piece of pizza, eat it, or two pieces of pizza, and I'm done. And you're done, and you're good. Whereas and the other before, man, when I hit that second piece, it was like, there's no stopping me. <laughs> right. And that's because your body had healed enough, and yeah. your metabolism had gotten strong enough, so some of the neurotoxin and the trigger-type ingredients right. that are in those foods are affecting you as right. much as they used to. So journaling, I guess, is a big deal. And if you're not journaling... It's really a great way to sort of get a handle on what's going on because if you don't know, if you're not measuring stuff, you bet. anything can happen. I mean, you, it, anything is the right result. So measuring is exactly. a big deal. Um, so let's talk about um, some of the foods that people ought to think about that are common trigger foods. Right. So I said Oreos and I've said pizza mm -hmm. and I've said chili cheese fries and all the fast food ones. But yes. what's some, what are some other ones? You know, there's, it's really interesting because you can get into it and I've seen people have trigger foods from chocolate yeah. and from popcorn and you know so you start thinking about these things trigger I, I i can't tell you how many patients i've actually met with and said i can't do without my chocolate i gotta have my chocolate and uh you know that's and i my answer to that is always that's great but we've got to understand what is the chocolate you can have as a trigger food right and is it a trigger food to you it doesn't shut systems down in your body and it goes back to the strategies of all and, and in, in some cases it may not be the chocolate Right. It may be the type of chocolate. So if it's milk chocolate, right, that's the one that's doing it to you, or it's it's some other chocolate that has a whole bunch, of, like fudge. Yes. Fudge has huge amounts of sugar in it. Oh, yes. Okay? Yes. <laughs> so maybe you're not really addicted to the chocolate. You're addicted to <laughs> the sugar, sugar in the chocolate. <laughs> exactly. You know? And wow. so you've got to really pay attention to that. Those can be some big things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the... We talked about some of the fast grab foods, but you know all the some of the things you know brownies, and you got cakes, you got cheesecakes, you got pies, you got ice creams, you got all those things that we've talked about. And there, and there, and it, we're, when we're since we're talking about foods, I mean for some people it's not it's a liquid food like they drink six cokes a day, right? You know, yes. Or maybe they drink ten cups of coffee a day with sugar in it, or something right. like that, because they're addicted to the the stimulant that's in there, right? Or the aspartame that's in there, or some mm -hmm. else, some other trigger food that's in the right. The and so those are doing. big issues as well. The okay. sodas are a huge, huge issue right. for our, our health today. And I remember one time I lost like ten pounds just stopped drinking cokes, right? Because of all the sugar. Because when you buy a can, it's like two servings, yeah. And you think it's like one, so oh, you yeah. have three of them. <laughs> exactly, right? Because you can't just have one all day. Right. So, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, those are some big things that you're looking at. Is you got to make some adjustments. When you're going out to eat, you know, you're ordering your foods, you know, have water, have lemonade, have something that's clear. And make sure you know what's in it. When you ask me about know, lemonade, what sweetens your lemonade? Right. Find out what it is. And so you can start having different choices that won't trigger you into a state of abundance of eating, shutting down your metabolism so you store too much fat. All those things are components that you got to be a cognizant, you got to be aware of what you're doing in your body. And it could be something that just starts the meal. So for example, you go out to eat, you notice they always bring out bread. Yes. Okay, so they bring out the bread and the bread may be the trigger food. Yes. Or they ask you if you want cocktails. Mm -hmm. The cocktail could be a double whammy because it, it could be a trigger food. Yes. And it's making you relax so you eat more. Yes. <laughs> so in those kinds of things, I see them all the time where people just aren't paying attention to what's going on. And the reality is whatever you pay attention to usually gets better. If right. you're not paying attention to it, it usually gets worse. Right. And that's, that's one of the issues that yeah. I think most people have. Wine is another one Yeah. that could be a trigger food out there. A lot of, and, and when you talk about wine, there is a plethora of options out yeah, there for yeah. wine. There's all kinds you know, of wine. That's like its own art. Yeah. Really, it is. And so just understanding all the options that you have out there, what are the different tastes and what your body likes. But those can be something that could be a trigger to you. And you and you could be drinking one type and have a lot of problems with it, but still be able to take, change over to a different type, have the same social engagement, have and the he, same And they could even be within, I'm guessing, within the same family. So I have yeah. normally drink Chardonnays or Merlots or something like that, but they ain't all the same. No, they're not. Matter not of fact, all. if you ask my partner Carl, he always talks to me, he means a wine connoisseur. So he's uh -huh. got the really high palate, got to have the really yes. good stuff. And... I've learned, because again, I would usually go, oh, okay, that's in my budget, I'm drinking, I'm drinking that. Okay. Yeah, a box wine, right? <laughs> no, it wouldn't be box wine, but it, would, it wouldn't be like a $20 bottle right. either. But, 
Carl will go out and find the twenty dollars stuff or the thirty dollars stuff, but he'll find it for fifteen somewhere. Yeah. And then well, he knows the industry. Like I said, it's an art form. So, yeah. I mean, but I, a lot of people go to wine in the evening to settle down their day and those types of things. Right. And I would just advise you to look and see how your body's reacting to it. Journal it. Find out what's happening when you do that and when you don't do it. I know to that. See the I know that I, if I drink any kind of alcohol, it takes me out of fat burning right away. Mm -hmm. For me, I mean, it's boot. So for other people, maybe if you're French or something, you could get away it's with it. It's a disruptor. But, well, <laughs> Carl maybe can get away with it. <laughs> but I know that, well, we have a friend, Carl and I have a friend who's like a stick. And he can drink all the wine he wants and never seems to make <laughs> anything. So, um, Another thing that I think that it causes the triggering is stress. If you're under a lot of stress, Huge whether issue. it's because of work or family issues or, or you're sick, Yes. There's a whole bunch of different... That can uh, cause all kinds of effects. It can. Let's talk a little you bit know, about that, because well, you see them all the time. I do, I do. I see a lot of individuals. Stress is an interesting uh, component in life, because we all have it. Yeah. And there's good stress, and there's bad stress. You know, a lot of people will consider you know, going to the gym. For some people, that's a good stress, yeah. because they enjoy doing it. It fills them up, and it gets that fix that we talked about. Right. But on other people, that could be a stress, because there, you know, there's, there's a lot of anxiety. Right. Uh, they when, don't want people to see exactly. me in my, like... Workout uniform exactly. or whatever. So you have that. And so when those types of things happen, the first off of stress is to know, is it a bad stress or is it a good stressor? But then the other thing is to understand your body, when it goes under a bad stress, it produces cortisol. Cortisol is kind of a very big disruptor in the yeah. body. It changes how the metabolism right. functions. It kills brain cells even. Exactly. <laughs> and so that can create a lot of things where people will say, okay, well, I'm stressed. I've got this cortisol going. I have a sensation. I'm going to mask my symptoms with food. Right. And go or reach for that donut or they whatever will. it is. <laughs> they will. And so and, and wine or donuts or and they'll they'll mask the symptoms of the stress and they continually do it and they'll abundantly do it because it masks all the problems that they're trying to hide from. Yeah, as a matter of fact I read a study one time that they did this on monkeys actually, but what happens is the food triggers, you know, the endorphins in the brain to the point where it's almost like cocaine. Yes. You know? <laughs> it is. But they keep wanting to get it and that, that deals with the stress. So I'm I'm yeah. sure that Eating is counteracting the stress because you're triggering a different part of the brain, which and gets you endorphins, endorphins and makes you up and things like that, and you get your dopamine. But cascade I, I also yeah. noticed that, like in the Mediterranean diet, they would tell people that you know you want to meditate because meditate lowers the cortisol and all that other kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And and again, people who do yoga and all that kind of stuff, generally you don't see real fat yoga people. I mean, I don't you know I don't go to every yoga station on the planet, but I <laughs> well, I haven't seen a lot of people doing yoga that are real fat. And if they were, they start to lose weight. And that's typically because they're relaxed, the cortisol gets reduced, the body can actually start to function properly, and those, the systems that control fat burn, control metabolism, can come out and really control what they're doing. And typically when you're making an effort like yoga, you're making an effort nutritionally to do the right, right. things too, and you learn a lot in those environments. So that's the big thing is taking those steps to make sure that you're going positively to negatively. No, I think that people who, who go out of their way to start Paying attention, and again, I said this earlier in the show, paying attention to what's going Ooh, on definitely. will make a difference. And, Huge. And you not only have to pay attention, you have to take action. Yes. And for you to be effective with your action, you really need to sort of put together some kind of plan. Yes. So we're talking about life and balance. The life and balance program is about putting together a plan for you that's individualized for you. It is. It is. I, I couldn't be more excited than a plan like Life in Balance because it's the most comprehensive plan I've ever seen put together for an individual. By the way, if, if you go to your doctor, ask them to give you a plan to improve your life overall. <laughs> I want you to do that because I've never seen them come up with anything like that. Yes, and that's why I'm so excited yeah. about it because we go through and we determine specifically yeah. what you need. What are the macro and micronutrient testings that we're going to do? What are the what are the testing? We do a hair analysis testing to give us an idea. How is your body functioning? And what are the trigger foods? What are all these things? What is a food list that looks for you? What does the diet plan look for you? And then aside of that, what is the detoxification steps that we need to take? What is the order that we need to go in? Do we detox the liver first? Right. Do we detox the intestines first? What is the order you need to go into to detoxify and clean the body out? What is the proper fitness plan for you? What type of fitness? I was going to say that was another thing that a lot of times people don't they, they, like. I don't want to exercise. Well, maybe you do you need to do some exercise. And, you know, the great thing is, is those individuals what they'll learn about themselves going through life and balance is. Everybody thinks of exercise as high intensity. I've got to go run a 5K. I've got to go do something like that. A lot of people's individual bio, you know, 
bioindividuality, mm -hmm. they can't take high intensity, high intensity. Well, I, I, light I, I'm, not, I'm a real good example. The reason I walk, even though it takes longer to burn the same number of calories, I don't do it to burn the calories. I do it for my cardiovascular system. Exactly. I could do the same thing and run and cut my time in half. But the problem is my knees wouldn't like it. Yeah. Well, there's and, and then there you know, was a stressor and then the cortisol comes up and then what did you really do right. to yourself? So when you look at that, I have a patient I actually met with yesterday and the exercise program we put him on is, is just some light biking, some rebounding on a trampoline and some swimming. You know, that is not a high intensity program. And I would bet $10 to one that he asked him what he likes to do. Yes, oh, I absolutely do, always, you know. Because, again, if you like doing it, you're more likely to do it. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, and that's what's so awesome about Life of Balance is it takes all this, corp you know, this, this knowledge base that we've gotten and putting together and all the techniques and the methods, and we look at you and say, we're going to take you from where you are today and we're going to show you specifically what are the real issues. There's you no get more a step-by-step -step plan that gives yes. you all the things that you really yeah. need to do to get to that road to well-being what i call right. well-being you know and, and you know that's that plan even incorporates with supplementation how many days you take your supplements and then when to take a break why to take a break and what do you do on that break so it's very specific oh, you mean to you're that. supposed to take a break from your supplements yeah that's a good idea <laughs> a lot of people don't do that <laughs> a lot of people don't i call and it vitamin vacation vitamin vacation mm -hmm. and what happens in your body when you do that and it finally gives the liver a chance to catch up okay. it gives your liver a chance to rest to clean everything out because it's still not in the active processing game of doing everything that you're doing. Yeah, the reality is, I found this to be for me, that if you take lots of vitamins because you're taking them medically or whatever, it puts a stress on your body. And when mm -hmm. you stop, if you're really paying attention, you'll notice. You'll notice yes. you feel a lot better. So yes. I know we got about two minutes left. I want to remind everybody that this is October. It's Breast Cancer Awareness, National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And also, it's National Chiropractic Month. It is. Um, I want to make sure that you understand that right now they have a special at the office where you can get yes, a free titron scan. Titron. Uh, come in and get that scan. It's really a non-invasive way of learning a lot about your system. Mm -hmm. It's really a really cool tool, and it's something that they can use to help you in a lot of different ways. We so, can. It gives us um, the pinpoint accuracy is what it gives us. Yeah. Um, give them the call number for so if they want to come and check out or go to the website, they can, yep. can get an appointment there. Definitely. Uh, call 904-683-8177. Uh, schedule an appointment with us. So it's Plenty of options, whether you want to do a Titron scan or there's other options for the for the Nutrimost Weight Loss Program, for the Life and Balance programs we have, and the exciting announcement we've had earlier this month with the Metatherm program that does the uh, scanning for thermography. Which we'll be doing a show on that pretty soon. Yes. Speaking of shows that are coming up, the next one we're going to talk about is um, flu and cold season coming up and how to get rid of the crud. That's right. So if you got the crud, right. you better be watching next week's show. You better be watching show. this one for sure. Don't miss it. Keep it Keep life in balance, guys. Thank <laughs> you.